Well, I like this bit in Matthew chapter 24 very much because it describes what Christ really is, okay, and what he is and how we'll know the difference. So it starts with verse 23 and it goes like this. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. For there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall shew great signs and wonders insomuch that, if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Behold, I have told you before. Wherefore, if they shall say unto you, Behold, he is in the desert, go not forth. Behold, he is in the secret chambers, believe it not. So that's through verse 26. And 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 what I'm hearing here is that these false Christs that people propose in the time of tribulation, these are people who propose that Christ is like a physical person that that will save them. Okay? This is he's saying that I am not some person that that you can go to and be with during this time. Okay, so if they say he's in the in the secret chambers, or if they say he's in the desert, don't go out there and look for a human being that's going to, to create this transformation in you. And then in the next couple of verses, he describes what it, well, in the next verse, he describes what he is really like. And this is very interesting. It's verse 27, and it, it goes like this. For as the lightning cometh out of the east, and shineth even unto the west, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Okay, so he is saying Christ is like lightning. Christ is a great light that shines from the east to the west. It's, and Christ strikes and transforms us. Okay, this is the energy of Christ consciousness that he's speaking of. He's not speaking of clinging to a person, another person. He's th speaking of personal transformation. He's speaking of the transformation of the whole sky of our awareness to something lighter and brighter. All right, so this is the last verse in, the, in this video that I'm going to talk about. It looks like verse 28. And I took some time puzzling over this, but now I have a possible um, meaning for you. And the verse goes like this. For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered together. And I spent some time wondering about eagles and carcasses because, you know, eagles are very beautiful and they're considered to be uh, like the national symbol of the United States, the national bird of the United States, and, and they're a royal bird in many traditions. And, and here I think we have, the apparently they, they are carrion birds and they feed on like roadkill. <laughs> so um, that's carcass. The carcass is, a, is like a dead animal, right? And then there's a bunch of eagles gathered together there. And first I wondered, because of the great, like, heights to which we place eagles, I wondered if maybe the eagles were the elect, you know, and but then I got to thinking that maybe the eagles are like the great Sanhedrin of Judea, which could be translated into the great religious leaders of today, and, you know, who are very, those who are very interested in maintaining the status quo, <laughs> because they have like a leadership position and it's very important to them to be higher than everybody else and like that you know and so um see which response i have i've been trying lately i am higher i am higher you know and that shakes people up so much and people in groups up so much that they just freak out and go away <laughs> and which is all right because my relationship my primary relationship is with god you know so so the eagles, in this case, I'm thinking Christ may have meant was like the, um, the uh, hypocritical religious leaders of his time who were, you know, always pretending to be one thing, 
he described in the previous chapter, they, 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 they pretend to fast, you know, and then they put uh, dirt all over their faces, and then everybody thinks that they're doing the right thing. But, but he's saying when you, when you when you do things for God, don't let anybody else know. Just just do them, you know. <laughs> and he goes into great lengths about that, about how how people are pretending to be this or that. Let me see. Okay, here we have Matthew chapter 23, verse 27. Ooh, scathing words from Christ it goes like this. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye are like unto whitened sepulchres, which indeed appear beautiful outward, but are within full of dead men's bones and of all uncleanness. So, so this I relate to this other verse that we're studying right now. See, here he describes the scribes and Pharisees, whitened sepulchers, looking really pure and white on the outside, but then on the inside full of dead men's bones and, and of uncleanness. All right, and, and this goes very well with this verse here that we were reading in chapter 24, which goes, For wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered, right? So let's say the eagles are the hypocritical Pharisees and scribes, and or in our, in our case, and cl hitting close to home, the elite of our particular religious groups, the leadership of our, of our religious groups. I know you don't want to hear this if you're reading this, okay? But it seems to be, to me, to be what Christ is saying. So he's saying, wheresoever the carcass is, there will the eagles be gathered. Suppose the carcass was our soul wounding, the soul wounding of the congregations. Suppose the, the leadership of, of the, the congregations is further increasing our soul wounding by leading us not in the context of Christ consciousness, but in the context of, of relative morality of social groups. Suppose, suppose the leadership of the congregations is participating in scapegoating and like um, pillorying other people. Uh, suppose it's engaged in witch hunts and, and witch burnings, all for the sake of maintaining the status quo, okay? So, so if, it, if it's involving the congregations in these types of activities of putting down other people and proselytizing other people who, ha who don't have the same faith in the name of, of Christ consciousness, no, this is... This is, this is causing the darkness and shadow of our own souls, actually. I mean, but it's like this. It's, 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 it's creating soul wounding. And they look good. They look like eagles. This is how I'm reading this. But they're gathering around what's dead in us, the, the all right, so, so we have to turn to the light, the lightning, the lightning that is Christ consciousness, and we have to turn away from this darkness of, of, of trying to kill other people, of creating that carcass in the world, you know. Don't gather around the wounding of other people. Don't stand by those qualities of leadership which allow this. And that is all I have for you today. It's a weighty topic and something worth consideration. What should we support in our spiritual leaders and what should we avoid? Okay, Do we owe them uh, infinite obedience or, like Christ, should we question the scribes and Pharisees and determine for ourselves what to look up to and what not to look up to?